Hey Rockstar, Steve aka Void here and I want to welcome you to this week's Pajama Jam. So if this is your first Pajama Jam, welcome. This is going to be a lot of fun. Um, we've got a really cool riff planned for today and um, that riff is one of my favorite riffs by Van Halen which is called Hot for Teacher. So welcome and if you're watching this live, then definitely let me know where you are watching from. Let me know that you're here. I'll see the comments in on my screen over here. And uh, definitely let me know that you're there. So, um, again, if this is your first Pajama Jam, then a couple of things about Pajama Jams. So, number one, Pajama Jams were originally created so that I can get some practicing done at nighttime. And um, having a nine-month-old and practicing guitar and getting everything done during a day can be relatively challenging. So I figured at nighttime is the best time. And during this time when I'm practicing, it's also... Um, I thought that it would be cool to broadcast those practice sessions. And so I'll get into a little bit more of the why and all that stuff and how it's a benefit to you in just a sec. But first I want to say hey to James Wheeler, hey to Philip, hey to Ken. How's it going, guys? Great to have you here. And I hope you enjoy the session. This is going to be a fun one. So pajama jams, um, also because I'm wearing pajamas, and maybe you are too. Um, I just want to be as comfortable as possible when I'm practicing guitar, making sure that there's nothing really um, introducing tension or anything like that in my in my uh, mind or my muscles. And so I'm making sure, you know, loose fitting clothing and all that, very, very important. Um, now just make sure, I just want to do a quick sound check. Can you guys hear me okay and hear the guitar? You should also hear like a reverb on that guitar. I just feel like it's in a room, like space. Um, so just let me know. That would be much appreciated. So pajamas, yes. Very loose um, and also just really comfortable. So that's another thing, but this is the most important part. So for pajama jams, what I'm doing in a pajama jam is I'm aiming to learn a popular riff or solo or finger picking part, really anything, any classic um, piece of music. And what I'm doing is making sure, uh, awesome, thanks, uh, thanks James for, for confirming. So what I'm doing, I'm making sure that I'm putting myself in a scenario where for beginner guitar players watching me, you're seeing me in a similar situation that you might be in. So for example, if I'm just playing a bunch of stuff that I already know, then you're not really going to benefit that much because I'm just playing stuff that I already know. So it's just, you know, you're not understanding the why or the what or the how or whatever goes into it. So if I put myself in a situation where I'm challenged, I'm putting, um, I'm playing techniques and things that are very challenging for me, then that's similar to some of the things that you might be working on. And yeah, it might be a chord, it might be a chord switch, it might be a picking pattern, a strumming pattern. But the point is, is I want you to be able to see how I work myself out of different obstacles and around different obstacles so I can get past them. And so for beginner guitar players watching, it's very important to see that maybe you're not looking at the specific notes that I'm playing because I'm not actually teaching the riff. But what I'm doing is I'm talking through what I'm thinking and the strategy that I'm using when I'm practicing and making sure that you get that strategy in your mind. So when you're practicing every single time, it's like you're in a really, really well-built car and you're driving to your destination very, very quickly and without any problems. So that is for beginners. Beginners will watch the um, pajama jams and watch me get into sticky situations and how I can practice to get out of them so I could play the riff in 30 minutes or less up to speed. So for uh, advanced players or more, uh, let's say intermediate players, that would be maybe you learn some new techniques or maybe you'll actually learn this riff and you can follow along with the tab if, if you'd like. But it's really not a requirement. I mean, again, at the base level, I'm taking this time to broadcast my practice session. I just want to have you kind of be a fly on the wall as I'm practicing um, because I know that when I'm practicing, the methods that I use and the strategies I use are really, really going to help you in your practice because the days of 
the days of practicing something from the beginning and seeing how far you get and then going back to the beginning if you make a mistake and then seeing how far you get and making a mistake, go back to the beginning. and go, It's just going to take a long time to do that. So there's a better way to do that and making sure that you're really engineering you're really engineering the parts that you're working on. All right. So, um, and I'm seeing, Hey, Shay, how's it going? Great to see you. Hey, Tommy, great to see you. And awesome, James. That's cool that your buddy's going to give you some guitar lessons for free. That's really, really cool. Very, very generous of him for sure. Um, awesome. So today we have Van Halen Hoffer teacher again, classic riff from the eighties. Uh, the album's 1984, very, very cool riff, and I'm going to be playing the main riff up to speed, and that riff is, the speed, the tempo of that is going to be 126 BPM, so I'll show you some strategies that we're going to use um, in order to get up to speed, and again, you're just going to see me talk through what I'm doing, and, um, and I'm going to be basically playing the riff, so I've got my guitar, it's in tune, um, I've got my picks here, I've got my water, I've got my pajamas, I've got my crackers just in case I need some fuel, and I've got my notes over here. So um, again, welcome, and I hope you enjoy this uh, session. It's also being recorded, I'm um, broadcasting it live, so this is also going to be on my page. So awesome. Hey, Sandy, great to have you here. Hey, Matt, awesome to see you. Great stuff. So Hoffer Teacher, basically this riff is... Um, it's got this, it's sort of like this, it's a bit funky and it's also a little bit like it's got this swing to it. I mean, oh man, like I was a drummer originally and I remember hearing this intro, this sort of with, um, with the, it sounded like a motorcycle. You, you turn on the track and it sounds like a motorcycle just kind of um, revving up. And then you find out, holy smokes, that's a drummer. That's insane. This double kick. So anyway. I tried it. That was really, really, really tricky um, to play. And um, but then also, you know, I also love guitar. And I heard this riff, and it just blew me away. So I hope that uh, that you enjoy this. This is going to be a really cool uh, journey where I'm going to be learning one of my favorite riffs, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So welcome, Eric. Awesome, awesome. Great to have you here, buddy. So let's take a look at the tab. I'm going to um, switch over to the tab over here okay and let's see can I switch between yes I can I can switch between here okay James awesome to have you here buddy maybe you can uh, catch this after dinner um, so what, we're, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to zoom in a little bit all right and so here I have the tab and I'm just going to get it in view over here all right, this should be good. So, I mean, if you do want to follow along, that's cool. But remember, this is not what this is all about. This is not a um, a YouTube lesson where I'm going to teach you, okay, so you put your finger here and then here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm going to learn this riff and how you can learn this riff or similar riffs, I mean, with, that, with the same strategies. I'm going to repeat the same things over and over and over in every single video that I, that I uh, create and any uh, training or program that I have. It's always the same principles, but applied to different scenarios um, because you're going to forget. You're going to forget these things. And I forget it sometimes too. And so I have to keep reminding myself. That's why I also enjoy coaching is because it keeps reminding me of these fundamentals. So, hey, Rich, how's it going, buddy? Really, really happy to have you here, man. So um, to start off, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the part where it comes in. Um, this is the part I'm looking for here, this first, this first um, little part. Uh, chord here and we have with fingers it says so it's not like and you get some like extra instructions there but all I really care about is I just want to play the notes here so it doesn't really matter about the sound that much um, it's just more the the notes that I want to play and getting the attack right and all that so the first thing um, that was just an A chord that I'm going to play here so I'm going to switch also over to my um, guitar cam all right now basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, I'm actually going to just kind of like look through the riff and see what's involved first and foremost. Okay. And so I know that I have to use my fingers, not a pick um, in this section. I'm kind of looking through. Okay. We've got these two notes. These are called double stops. Okay. It's got some pull offs over here. Got some hammer ons. Looks like a little fancy schmancy thing over here. As my buddy Wayne says, the frilly bits. So um, we've got some slides. 
Okay, um, what else do we got here? Some more slides. Pretty much the same thing. It just looks like it's repeating over and over. And for anybody who knows this riff, actually, let me know in, in the comment box, um, do you know this riff? Have you heard this riff by Van Halen, Hot for Teacher? This is one of the most uh, popular riffs. And, um, and so I'm just curious to know if you know this riff. So I'm just looking through. So the first thing you want to do, if you, especially if you have a tab, you want to look through the tab to make sure that uh, you, you can see, kind of take a survey of like what techniques are involved. Okay, so that is, um, that's pretty much, so Hot for Teacher, I mean, it's pretty much those techniques. So we've got these double stops and we've got, uh, we use our fingers, we've got pull-offs, we've got hammer-ons, we've got slides. I don't see any bends or anything like that. Okay, but I see some like, some of these, like I said, frilly bits. Okay, that's what, uh, <laughs> that's what my friend Wayne uh, calls them. So we've got that. Um, also, it looks like it's pretty much on two strings max at once. So I'm just kind of look, looking through it, looking at it almost like a map before I go on a trip over here. And um, instead of just kind of jumping right into it and seeing what we get, I want to just more prepare for the trip. Okay, so that is... That's the, that's pretty much, that's the first step. Okay. So making sure that I've got that. Now I'm just going to kind of get my, get my fingers on them, um, all on the different parts and just working out what fingers would work best, but I'm not thinking about the speed. I'm not thinking about any tempo. I'm just going at my own pace to make it through the, the riff. So here, I'm just going to go through this kind of this part here. Okay. So let's just see what we've got. So I'm going through and I'm already hearing the riff in there, um, just re repeating, just seeing kind of like how many times, okay, and then, and then this little frilly bit here, open, hammer on, hammer on, hammer on. So again, I'm planning what fingers to use. This is the, the thing here. Cool, lucky, how's it going, buddy? Um... So I'm just planning what fingers to use. This is what I'm doing here. I'm planning what fingers to use. And then seeing here. So I'm just gonna, kind of going with my first instinct here. And then as I play, I'm going to see um, if it makes sense. And depending on the speed and if I make mistakes, then I'm going to adjust. When you play something one way... Uh, and you're making a bunch of mistakes, you have to think like, maybe I'm not playing this with the right fingers, or maybe I can do this in a different way to get a, a better end result. Okay. Uh, and by the way, this is a tab over here. This could also work the same way if you have a chord diagram um, or a lyric sheet with chords on top. It's all the same thing. You want to look through the section you play before you play it just to see what's involved. You don't want to find out. Like, you don't want to be driving on the trip and then find out there's a road closure. So that's it. Trip's done. You can't go anymore. This is the same thing. You want to make sure that there's any bar chords that um, are in there that or a technique like a bend or something that might be a little bit tricky. And you're like, okay, cool. Well, hmm, what can I do there? Maybe on that bar chord for now, I'm going to play a power chord there in that spot right here, blah, 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 whatever, right in that spot. And you can, and instead of that bend, maybe I'll do a slide. So you can even grab a pen and mark down on the, on the piece of paper uh, what you're going to do. And that way, you know that when you drive on this road here, you got to make a right turn because if you keep going straight, that road's going to be closed and then you know it's game over so making sure that you know the trip before you even go on the trip okay before you even leave okay does that make sense let me know let me know if that makes sense i'm gonna take a quick drink of water over here and let me know if that makes sense and then we'll get started so the clock will officially start what you know what i'm gonna do next time i'm gonna to try to remember to do this we'll have a little countdown timer in the corner and maybe you know what <laughs> i think i could actually do it now that'll actually be much better um so let's see, can I add that? Um, overlays, let's see, countdown timer. That'll be fun if we have a countdown timer happening. So that'll technically be, so 30 minutes from now is going to be um, 9.44, okay. So let's, let's start that. Got a little countdown timer over here, make it, make it fun. Um, all right, we'll put this maybe up here. So I have that little countdown timer there. So playing the riff up to speed in 30 minutes or less. Okay. All right. So awesome, guys. Great to, uh, great to know that that's making sense. Cool. So let's get to the riff here. Let's see if we missed anything. 
I mean, that's pretty much the riff, the main riff there, the, the higher octave riff. Um, and it was feeling pretty good. Finger-wise. I mean, I'm not really feeling awkward or anything like that. Okay, so that's already feeling like this is the right move here, but I'm going to switch to... Oops. Okay, I'm going to switch to the guitar cam. So, so this is first shot. And and it's I can't stress this enough. It's so helpful when you know the riff. I mean, I'm picking riffs that I've heard before so many times, and I can't stress it enough. When you're learning how to play riffs, whether it's um, so you're playing leads or maybe you're playing chords or something, play songs that you know how they go. Like you've heard them a thousand times because that's so burnt in to your mind that you know all the little moves and that's really going to help with um, with your fingers, getting them, you know, to play the right rhythms and to play, um, is this the right note here? Am I, am I in tune? And you can really hear it uh, if you've heard the song so many times. Okay. So with this song here, see, it's kind of like already sort of playing itself. So I'm still going without any tempo. I'm just kind of doing it at my own pace, just whatever's comfortable. Okay, cool. Now, this might be working, but when I play it faster, I know that there's probably going to be some problems. Okay, I know that I'm probably going to run into some, some problems here. So, the tempo of this riff is uh, 126 BPM. Okay, so 126 BPM and in order to do that, um, in order to get up to speed, I might have to start at a slower speed. So one of the strategies that I, I use is number one, no tempo practice. So number one is just playing it as you go. So like when you're learning how to play a riff, you play it with no tempo. So I'm, that's when I was going at the beginning, kind of just going like this. Just going through the different parts. working on accuracy, not working on rhythm and pulse, just working on the accuracy of the notes and just getting exposed to it and making sure the fingers are playing and it's feeling comfortable. But then once you do no tempo practice, then what you can do is slow tempo practice. So slow tempo practice, and you see, if for anybody who doesn't know, um, YouTube, uh, uh, Google, sorry, has, if you just type metronome, they have their own little metronome over here. So you can, you know, adjust the tempo and all that. But the target is 126. Okay, so 126 is speed. Which is much faster than I'm playing it right now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 20 BPM slower than it should be. Okay, and if you have a songbook, if you have a songbook, uh, or sometimes even online, you can it'll include the tempo. So here, hot for teacher. 126. So see, it'll tell you what the tempo is supposed to be. And you can even search online, you know, uh, hot for teacher tempo, and, and it should be pretty accurate. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play at a steady tempo. And I'm going to aim for accuracy of the pulse, um, not the um, not just the notes. Okay. So here and I don't think that you can hear the temp, this uh, metronome, but that's okay. Like I, as long as I could hear it in a steady, that's the main thing. Yeah, it doesn't look like you can you can hear that metronome. But that's okay. It's going like this. This is the speed of 106. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play, and I'm going to play in little chunks. Okay. So I'm going to play in little chunks and just see what each part feels like at that tempo. feels pretty good. So I'm now I'm going to do this next part. So that feels good. Then let's see this part here. This might be where it gets a little bit crazy. When you're playing Sometimes what happens is you'll play something really um, well at a slower tempo, and then when you play at a faster tempo, 
everything kind of falls apart and it means that you might have to adjust something and it means that even if you played it well slowly you have to adjust something when it, when you play it quickly in order to um, and I'll show you in a second what I mean by this, but like you have to change something in order to get to the finish line. Okay, so um, I could tell when I play this part here, I'm probably gonna have to modify this a little bit, um, the section here, in order to play it uh, and then add in the rest. So I'll kind of like outline the, the picture and then stencil, and then um, so I'll stencil, stencil it and then I'll color it in. So, so that's all feeling good. So second time so three times so I like to play things three times without making a mistake before moving on moving on to another part uh, moving on making it faster um, making it more complex I like to do three times without making a mistake if I made two mistakes in a row I'll go back I'll play slower I'll play simpler I'll play um, a, a shorter part okay okay now this part here I want to do it three times without making mistakes. So I'm, what I'm doing right now, I'm just coloring in all these little parts here, but short parts, short, short chunks, three times without making a mistake. Okay. And this is a hammer on. There's like a triple hammer on. One, two, three. So it's like. Okay. So now next. Um, so here. Third time. So I have all these little chunks here. Now I'm going to see what happens if I do this crazy part with the um, with going right into this. Whoops. So that was a mistake. So I have to do it three times without making a mistake to move on. So I'm going to move forward. So does that make sense how I'll go three times without making a mistake and then I move on to something else? Like it's so that I can really lock in the part. One time might be lucky, two times in a row might be lucky, but three times in a row without making a mistake, that's probably, probably means that I've got it. Okay, so let's move on. So we've got 21 minutes over here. And by the way, at the end of the session, uh, you're going to have an opportunity to uh, tell me what you're working on and um, ask me questions about what you're working on. I want to make sure that you also get a lot of value here because I'm already broadcasting here. So might as well uh, use the time to also troubleshoot some stuff with you. Okay, so um, let's move forward. So let's put it all together and see where we're at. Okay, so. Not bad. So that I actually got through it at a much, um, so I played it at 20 BPM slower. So it's at 106. So. actually made a mistake over there I made um, an error in strategy whenever you're playing three times without making a mistake play the part and then take a break and then play it again and then take a break don't um, put them right into each other because that's going to work out um, you're it's not accurate you're working on too much stamina and um, it's like it's it's testing other things right now I'm just testing to make sure I can play the riff not to connect it and loop it over and over so what it should look like is this That's one time correct. Now again. Two times correct. Okay, now. Three times correct. So now I can move on. Can anybody tell me what I should do? Like what's a good idea to move on to? Um, I'm at 106 BPM and um, the step that I completed was... I played the part three times without making a mistake. I played the riff once, once through. I played that once, one time, um, and I did it three times without making a mistake. So I played it, and then I took a break, then I played it, I took a break, played it, took a break. So that's three times without making a mistake. What can I move on to? What's an option for me to move on to? Okay, so I don't even care that it's taking up a little bit of my uh, my 30 minutes here. Um, I want to know if, if you can name a strategy that might work next. Like what's the next part, next experiment? What's the next part that I should play? Because when I play three times without, move, uh, without making a mistake, I need to move on to something that's going to stretch me just a little bit, okay? 
Um, so the whole riff three times. So Phil, that's um, so that's one option there. What I would say is maybe two times. Play the riff twice. So because remember the first, what I did in the first experiment is I did one time of the riff, okay, one time of the riff, and I so I I'm playing at a certain speed. I'm doing one time of the riff. And I did that whole thing three times without making a mistake. So what I can do is I can play the whole riff. I can play the riff twice in a row and do that three times without making a mistake. Same speed. Okay, that's one option. Then I see Shay and uh, Ken bump up to a faster speed. Definitely. That's another thing I could do. I could stay with. I could keep the amount and I could increase the speed. So see, on uh, your yours, Phil, what you suggested is that I increase the amount. I maintain the speed. I increase the amount. That's definitely one option. I'll show you that. Um, Shay and Ken are saying that I could keep the amount, uh, the keep the amount that I'm playing, um, or I'm kind of getting confused with what I'm saying here. Sorry. So Phil, you said um, so uh, increase the amount, maintain the speed. Shay and Ken are saying um, keep the amount, keep it to one time, but increase the speed. So either way, that's going to be what I would consider moving on. That's another experiment that stretches you just a little bit. So let's do Phil's. Um, let's do. Phil's idea first. Okay, so let's keep the same speed and let's do two times in a row. Okay. All right, let's get this back up here. Okay. <laughs> so that's that's one time. Okay, that's one time here. times. Now I'm going to do a third time. Oh, <laughs> there. Actually, I'm, that's uh, I made a mistake, so I got to got to do it again. So that's one time. So then again. times okay and then the last time three times they'll make a mistake now I can move on <coughs> excuse me so I could do add more I could um, add increase the amount same speed or I could keep the amount and increase the speed either one all right so let's keep going uh, we've got 16 minutes left here um, to get up to speed so let's increase the speed. So typically what I would do is if I play three times without making a mistake, I would increase by, um, <laughs> if I had a lot of time, I would do it by one BPM. So each time I increase, it would actually, um, I wouldn't even notice that it would be increasing. But let's do it by three, three BPM. Um, we'll go three BPM. So, because also you don't really notice three BPM either. Okay, so I'm going to increase by uh, three BPM there. Phil wants to see up by five. Okay, for for TV purposes, let's do it up by five. Typically, you want to do it without noticing the difference. In five, you kind of notice the difference a bit. When you notice the difference, your brain, your radar turns on. It's like, oh, wait a second, this is too fast. And then you tense up just because you think it's too fast. So we're going to do a five here for TV purposes and because we're running out of time here. But um, I want to see you do it at around three. Okay, so let's go back here. All right. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually um, play one time and I'm going to keep increasing. Okay. And let's see what happens if I just, I'm going to play one time of the, the riff. Okay. And so one, one uh, pass of the riff. And then I'm going to do that three times without making a mistake and then um, move on plus five. Okay. So that's what you're going to see here. I'm going to play the riff once. I'm going to do that correctly three times without making a mistake. And every time I do three times without making a mistake, that means the experiment succeeded. I'm going to go up 5 BPM. Okay. Okay, that's one time. And again. Last time. Okay, so 5 BPM higher now. Let's see what happens. Now, um, 
again, you want to do three because three is really under the radar. You can't really tell, can't really tell that it's, um, it's getting faster. And that's the, the key. You're actually tricking your brain. It just feels like it's the same thing, but gradually it's like, um, someone loses weight. Um, you, you're on a diet or you're working out. Someone doesn't see you for a really long time and they're like, Whoa, you know, you lost a bunch of weight or you got, you know, you got ripped. Um, but it, seeing it every day, you know, and seeing yourself in the mirror every day, just you don't really notice. Um, it's because it's every day. It's so gradual. So this is the same thing with BPM. If you go three up, bit by bit by bit by bit, you're not really going to notice it. Okay. Uh, five, you kind of do. But I'm doing five for the purposes here. Okay. Now, uh, let's go three times without making a mistake at this speed. And what you want to make, make sure of is when you play faster, you want to make sure that you can counterbalance that. You want to make sure that you maintain as much as possible what you were doing before. Um, but you also want to play, um, keep your fingers close to the, to the guitar as much as possible because distance equals time. The longer it takes you to get somewhere, it's going to slow you down. So you got to stay close, as close as possible. And you maybe play a little bit lighter too because that's going to relax your muscles as you get faster. <laughs> So that's one, two, three. Let's go, uh, keep going here. And we're at 121, so we're almost at the target tempo. Okay, and I'm still going one time um, of the riff. Like, just I'm not repeating the riff at all. And notice how when I'm playing three times without making a mistake, notice how I'm not playing it over and over and over three times in a row. That's too much stress. Right now, it's just one experiment, just one one part. Okay, and I'm doing, I'm taking a break when I'm done, and then I'm uh, repeating. So three times without making a mistake, moving on. Okay, then again. Three times. Okay, not bad. Not bad. We'll take that one. So now let's go up to speed and let's see what we got. This is where some craziness might happen. Okay, but it might also be mental. Like you might psych yourself out just just because it's the target tempo. It doesn't mean really anything changed. But going gradually is definitely a better approach. Um, three times um, or three three BPM. Okay. So that's also a good thing to remember, three, three times without making a mistake, three BPM faster. Um, so let's go here to the, to the riff. Okay. Then the last time. Ah, so no, not good. Okay. Just going to double check this. Feel for that. Three times without making a mistake. Moving on. You're going to see me do this, like where I isolate something. Three times without making a mistake. Moving on. It's just like part of how I practice. Okay, then second time. Okay, third time. Yeah, I feel good about that. So you see how I'm putting this together, right? I'm not, I'm not, um, I didn't work it out there and then only do it once because I did it two times correctly, like five minutes ago. I got to get three times in a row. Um, I've got to make sure that I'm getting three consecutive passes, um, correct before moving on. Okay. If I make one mistake, it resets the counter back to zero. Play one time, correct. Two times, correct. Three times, correct. Move on. One time, correct. Two times, correct. Mistake back to zero. One time, correct. Mistake, back to zero. So this is the, the idea here. If you play two mistakes in a row, you got to go back. So you got to play slower, 5 BPM slower. I recommend three. Um, you would play a shorter part, um, play a simpler part. Okay, and this, having this is really makes it like a game when you're practicing. This really helps you drive the car. So before, uh, I've got, so I've got less than 10 minutes left here um, to, to learn this riff up to speed. Before I move forward, does this all make sense? Is this helpful? Is it helpful to see this in a different situation? Is it, um, is it helpful to see me applying this to different techniques that aren't just necessarily just chords? It's also kind of like a little bit of a riff, um, a little bit of a lead here. Is this helpful? Please just let me know. This is how I practice. This is how 
how I encourage you to practice because it makes it easier. You get a lot done in a very short amount of time. Okay. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank it up a little bit in the sense of I'm going to keep the same tempo um, and I'm going to add a second pass. So I'm going to repeat the riff twice. Okay. <laughs> One time, so. Oh, okay, so now reset back to zero. Cool, so one. Zero. I don't like that, so right? So it's making sure that you're playing it and you just, you know, you are honest with yourself, right? Like, I didn't like that. It didn't sound good. So, so. Okay, one. Cool, two, three times. Not bad. I'm pretty. I'm pretty okay with that. Um, what I want to do, um, and I've got this metronome just clacking in my ear here. Um, I want to make sure that I can play. Um, I can focus a little bit on some other stuff like um, the the sound, some of the like details, because I've played that two times. What, what I'm going to do in the next seven minutes, I'm going to play it four times, um, four times in a row without making a mistake, up to speed. Okay, and that would be. That would be the, the riff, okay, four times. All right, so um, I'm gonna just work on some of the key parts here, like the this part. Also, just looking at what my fingers are doing here. Working out some of those mechanics there. like going back zooming in is like kind of like coloring in the picture around that area isolating putting it under the microscope three times without making a mistake moving on it's just part of how i practice um so eventually if this is, so if this is new for you but it'll be like eventually it'll be natural for you to practice like this where you play three times without making a mistake um what was the other part oh i wanted to just mention if i if i wasn't really playing this part well then what I would do is I would play, um, I would just simplify this part instead of this. I would go like this, like instead of having three notes, open five, six, seven over here, open five, six, seven, because it's a faster run, I would play um, open five, seven maybe. So I wouldn't do the whole thing. the whole thing and then I would get comfortable with that and then I would just fill in the, the rest okay so don't be afraid to modify parts you know I made a post about this just like you know don't be afraid to modify the strumming pattern or the, the whatever you're doing in order to get it done I mean even if like for example my focus was rhythm and I just went like this um, I went uh, da, 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 da. And I didn't do this. Even though that's part of the riff. I mean, maybe I go first and just get comfortable with that. And then just get a little bit of that there. Making music, playing along with the record. Uh, maybe I do a single string. Okay. So it's not, it doesn't have to be where you're playing exactly the end result right away, face value. You know, you can play it. You can definitely modify things. So um, I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do that because I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, and so, yeah, I'm going to just go for it four, t uh, four times in a row. Okay, so let's make this happen. Wish me luck. So I'm going to play four times without making a mistake. Um, so four times in a row, just no, no mistakes here. 
And if I do make a mistake, I'm going to try to keep going. So let's go here. Um, actually, and that's the other thing too, then the detail. So once I get to this point, I can get the detail. So that's a short shot when it goes like... Um, I kind of improvised that last part there. I think that that's correct. Yeah, open strings there. Yeah, I just kind of improvised that. That was a bit lucky. So, because um, then it goes like this. And it's like, um, what does it do? It does like the chords. That that's when it gets heavy. So that's when it goes over here. Yeah, so that, what's that? Like, uh, with the pick. So you just flick this. Like, yeah. do same same kind of thing yeah but see since i already learned this yeah so anyway the this part here is the focus of this pajama jam this section okay and so what i did was made sure i got up to speed and then i worked out any of the the details make it fair I'm going to like to make sure that's for sure up to speed I'm gonna have the metronome going here okay because I might have been playing a little bit slower let's just see let's find out here two minutes left let's get this thing happening okay four times uh, in a row <laughs> shorter part to work on um, this week for this week's pajama jam but a lot of the principles that we're working on here are principles that we've been working on every single week where it's just you know three times them making a mistake moving forward two times making a mistake moving back okay and just getting those techniques over and over just today we introduced the, the metronome playing um, when you do three times without making a mistake the moving forward is not just playing faster but actually measuring it you know I recommend three BPM each time um, for TV purposes over here we did um, five BPM faster but that's that's typically we want to go three BPM just out of curiosity, do you remember why? Do you remember why we're going to go 3 BPM? I'd say 1 to 3 um, is good, like is a healthy dose. Like if you go 3 times without making a mistake on a part and you want to play it faster, bumping it by 1, 2, or 3 BPM max is uh, what I recommend. Why? Why is it the best to do that and maximum 3 BPM? Let's see if anyone remembers. Let's see if anybody remembers. And, and by the way, so those were the techniques that we use today. And there's all these different, all these different techniques that we could use. Um, doesn't matter what riff. This is also why I'm doing a variety of riffs is because, you know, maybe next week I'll do like a finger picking part or something. And I'm always, always open to requests all the time for pajama jams. I'm always open to requests. Um, and so, yeah, like it doesn't matter what kind of riff we're playing or if we're playing a solo, or if we're playing um, a finger picking part, strumming pattern. It's all the same thing. You want to break it down into chunks. You want to first look at o the overall thing. If you have a, a document like a songbook or you have a, a lyric sheet with chords, you want to look at the whole trip first. Make sure there aren't any roadblocks or closures. And we've got to like switch them. If there are, we've got to make some detours. Okay, if you need any help with this, you know, just, just ask. And, and for any of my Play From Day One um, members, just, just ask, you know, and just post in the group and, and just ask. And I'm more than happy to help you. So, um, awesome, Sandy. Yes, you trick your mind when you do three times uh, without making a mistake, you move forward and you do three BPM on a metronome faster. You're tricking your mind because it doesn't seem like it's faster. It, it's just, it seems like it's the same speed, but gradually, 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 it becomes a much faster tempo. Okay, so that is 
Hot for Teacher by Van Halen. Hopefully that was helpful seeing those techniques in action. It's kind of cool like playing this riff. I love this riff. So um, having that, you know, under my fingers right now feels good. It's sort of like this is a riff that I've always wanted to play. I love that. I love that feel there. I love that. It's just a, it's just a cool riff. Just a really fun riff. Um, so, I mean, again... If you're looking at this and you're not able to play those notes, that is not really what the point of this video was. It just wasn't to teach you the specific notes there. So hopefully you got the main strategies of how to apply things to your playing because I want to put myself in situations that are difficult for me to play and work my way out of that like that but like that little part that was tricky and uh, making sure to play it up to speed and all that that's challenging so I want to make sure that I'm put in situations that you might be in with other material and then for any intermediate players who are actually playing hot for teacher hopefully those tips um, really helped you to work that out because um, you know whether it was the fingers that I used or the fact that you just know that if you're running into problems that you can change the fingers. Don't think that it has to be stuck to one thing. If you're not getting a result, try something else. For sure, try another strategy. So that's Hot for Teacher. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, we still have some time. Um, we, we have some time, so just let me know if you have any, um, any questions or if you have any... Um, you know, if there's, if you want to tell me what you're working on, I'm, I'm here for you. I might grab some crackers here, but I am definitely here for you. So awesome, awesome, Sam. That's, um, I'm really happy to hear, uh, hear you enjoyed the session. Yeah, let me know, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what you've been working on. Um, I'm very, very, um, very happy to help. If there's anything you need simplifying or anything like that, just let me know what you've been working on and uh, we'll be on for another maybe like 15 minutes or so here. All right. Yeah, that was, that was a fun one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a bit addictive to play. love that it's really cool um all right so ken and let's see maybe i can maybe i could drag this add to broadcast here uh i wish that wasn't red let's see if i can change that from red from red to maybe white yeah let's do that there we go okay so ken is saying um, he's having issues keeping the ring finger and pinky together when trying to switch between bar chords. Pinky either falls off the string or wanders during the switch. I know I need to post live, but I always end up late. Or it always ends up late and not wanting to wake the wife. All good, buddy. Um, all right, so let's keep this on the screen here so that we've got some context. Yeah, um, and maybe actually maybe that's a bit. Where could I put this here? Let's let's keep it maybe here, so I can actually like give some advice. Um, and I'll switch. Let's get that out of the way. Yeah, that should be good. Some context. So keeping the ring finger and the pinky together when trying to switch bar chords. Yeah. So first and foremost, you know, you want to make sure that you have your power chords down. Whenever you're working on bar chords, you want to make sure you have your power chords down. So if you're playing something like, you know let's say you're playing three, five, and seven. Okay, let's just say, I mean, that's, that's not a riff that I can think of right now, but um, playing four times on each one. Now, if you can do that... already halfway there okay now if you know my super glue system where the pinky and the ring are together then this is gonna be a similar concept because we're gonna be playing and we're gonna focus on the ring finger being tucked under that uh, the pinky being tucked under the ring finger there with a slight bend okay and by the way you know shooting a video and uh, and posting this in the group at any point doesn't have to be live. It could even be recorded if time is an issue. If you want to record it at another time um, and then and then post it, it, it's it's all good. But I just want to make sure that I could see this happening, where you have 
the uh, the pinkies under the ring finger because this here grouping them together like this grouping them like that if possible it's just gonna make them stronger okay sometimes some people's fingers go in different shapes like maybe sometimes they can't go together like this but maybe there's like a little hole in between but it's the same concept it has to do with um, making sure that the pressure is even and that a lot of that has to do with the thumb so the thumb is pressing down and it's not too high it's not too low it's right behind the this fret right over here okay so this is where my th my thumb is okay but the point is, is that this feels balanced I'm not pressing down my middle finger yet okay, I'm not even barring my index finger. The main thing, I just want to get comfortable with three finger power chords. And what I recommend, Ken, is that you play steady between one fret at a time. Okay? And when you're playing, you're not dragging your fingers. That also might be screwing up the shape there. You're not pressing down and keeping them pressed down like this. What you're doing is you're actually lifting um, the pressure. Okay, so you're not you're not keeping that pressure and dragging what you're doing is you're releasing the pressure okay you're releasing that pressure and gliding okay you're sliding over and when you slide like this without pressing there's no tension really so you can just move everything you can even um, release the pressure of your thumb so it's not dragging and then what happens is if you're going from one fret to another fret <laughs> on this structure like the structure that matters even if there was like if there was a big problem what you could even do is just focus on these guys here where you're pressing you're lifting sliding pressing like that okay not lifting off the strings right not lifting off the strings keeping your finger on the string but gliding over okay because I think what's happening is you're probably switching um, with keeping your fingers pressed and it's kind of distorting the shape and moving them all over the place. So try to keep everything together. Okay. And staying on track. Okay. And yeah, you're saying, yeah, you might be dragging. Yeah. Yeah. So make sure to just release the pressure when you're moving from chord to chord, but focus on your power chords first. Play that three times without making a mistake. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, Let's say that's three times. Let's say that's um, one pass, and you do that three times without making a mistake. Then once you could do that, then add the pinky in there. Make sure it's tucked under the ring finger. At any speed, any speed that feels comfortable, but making sure that you're doing the same thing you're doing with the power chord, where you're lifting, sliding, pressing, right? And when you're playing with the ring finger and the pinky with, together, grouped like that, it's the same exact move and then you could add the the middle finger so it would be let's say i'm still not barring right okay and then you gradually work your way up bit by bit um another path that you could go down is you can go um with the power chord one fret then the three finger power chord one fret and then maybe once you're done that maybe you go through uh, three finger power chord go two frets distance so further jump and then maybe three frets distance so you'd go and i'm playing a bit faster here but maybe you go a bit slow you go slower you go whatever speed is comfortable for you but the main thing can hopefully this is what's coming across here is that you're not pressing down and holding down and dragging your fingers and you're also doing it in a way where we go to the we think of it this way can i do this um can i do a simpler version of this thing and like a simpler version of a bar chord is a power chord so can i do a two finger power chord if i could do a two finger power chord three times without making a mistake can i do a three finger power chord and then once you do your three finger power chord with between let's say one fret five um to six fret five to six then you can go fret five to seven fret five to eight and you can just gradually go but the whole time you're going steady strumming and you're making sure that you're building up the skill bit by bit okay my guess is that you're doing too much at once where you can't 
um, monitor everything that's happening. Maybe, like you were even saying, yeah, you might be dragging. I want you to know for sure whether you're dragging or not. And what that means is I want I don't want there to be any um, surprises. I want it to be very controlled in the sense that you know you're conducting the experiments. You're the scientist. So um, it's not that you're doing too much. Um, you're just jumping into bar chords and you're not really focusing on exactly what you're doing to where you can't monitor and track what you're doing. Like maybe I'm dragging, I don't know. I haven't really thought about that. I want you to know what you're doing and that's why we simplify the experiment to power chords. Cool, can I achieve power chords? Yeah, no problem, check. And now let's add the pinky underneath that. Okay, and I'm not dragging, I'm releasing the pressure when I switch and I, I slide over, I press again, lift, slide, press. And when you do that, and you do it three times without making a mistake before moving on to the next experiment, you're totally going to win. So again, for posting, um, for posting and play from day one, whenever you can, man, whenever you can do it um, at any point, it doesn't have to be live. You could just record a video and you could do it, let's say even on your phone and don't even worry about quality. Just make sure to post because when you post, it's going to, you can just put the post there and any one of the members can comment and then I can go in and I could comment and you could even be sleeping while that's happening. Um, your wife could be sleeping as well while that's happening. And then you wake up and then you see, oh, cool. So you got feedback. So, you know, the next time that you practice, you know what to work on. All right, buddy, is that helpful? Let me know in the comment box if that is helpful. All right. So that's good. I like that feature as well to uh, drag the comment there. And I'm out of water here. All right. Cool. Awesome, Ken. Yeah, work on that, bud. That's great. Cool. All right. So anybody else? Before we wrap up, we've got a few minutes left over here. Um, anybody else want to share what you're working on? If you have any questions, anything like that. And for my uh, Play From Day One members, I'm just working on map number five right now. Just finishing, putting the finishing touches on on that. It's going to be a good one. There's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of cool skills developed in that one there. For anybody who's still on map number one or map number two, there's a lot of great stuff coming. So um, cool. So Shay, yes, glad you talked about the position of the thumb behind the upper strings. I've been fighting to find the right spot. Seems like it varies depending on how far I'm up the fretboard. Okay, yes, um, the thumb does vary depending on where you are on the fretboard. And Shay, yes, I know. Okay, I know that bar chords kind of got the best of you um and it's okay it's all good it happens to all of us okay it happens to all of us and it is totally normal bar chords are not going to be uh difficult for long it, you're just going to know how to hold them down you're going to know where to press um where to have the thumb how to switch what's important in that like, do I have to play the whole bar or like if I make a mistake, do I stop? No, we never stop. We got to keep going and like maybe I'm adjusting the index finger as I go. And it's just something that you're just kind of working with. But as you're working with it, make sure to always keep the playing going. You know, I made that post about um, never stopping and like playing through the mistakes and being okay with it. You know, it's it's so important, especially for your sanity. You're not going to get a better, you're not going to get a, a good desirable result if you uh, make a mistake and stop. You're going to get a really good result if you just keep going, okay? Um, so, yes, definitely um, trying to be a bit more reckless as you advise. Yes, be more reckless and post. Post a video. Let me know where you're at. Let's, um, let's see inside the group um, where you're at with your bar chords. And, uh, and it could just be something so simple. You know, you remember from when we had a uh, one-on-one, -on -one, there was, there was like their little tiny things that we, we worked on. And you'll know this as an engineer, like there's little pieces of the machine that if you just fix this one little bit, maybe you didn't notice, but there's this one little bit. If you fix that, then the whole thing starts working. So, um, you know, it's normal to get kind of caught up in a certain technique, but just know number one, bar chords are not... Um, are not everything. Bar chords are definitely not everything on guitar. They're, they're very useful. And so that's why we want to put the time in for bar chords and also not just the time in practicing them. We also want to put the time into, into understanding how to practice them and understanding what goes into them and understanding what we could get away with and understanding alternatives. If we can't do this, then what do we do? That's what we want to put the time into because the sooner you can start playing bar chords, even if they're not perfect, 
the, the you're going to be really really happy with your guitar playing and the amount of songs you can play because bar chords can represent major and minor chords in a way that um, open chords can't really do as easily and um, and so that might not make sense right now to you but uh, just stick with it post when you can it looks like on Friday that's when uh, when we're going to see a post so very very excited about that Shay very very cool and hope that um, yeah it's just back from work I hope that travel was good and um, and I'm really excited to hear those uh, those bar chords. Awesome. All right. So we um, we just hit the one hour mark. So I'm just going to double check here if there's any other comments. So Don, how's it going, dude? Yes. Um, most people don't know you made a mistake. So you keep on playing as if you didn't make one. Exactly. Yeah, that's a great point, Don. Just keep going. Own it. Just own it. Most people, they won't even reckon, like they won't realize, especially if you start singing, if you're singing. Oh man, I was just watching um, Nirvana on Saturday Night Live. They were playing Heart Shaped Box. And Kurt Cobain's playing was atrocious. It was so bad. And it doesn't matter. He was singing. That's all that matters. He was singing the songs that like people were loving at that time. And and no one cares. No one cares about these little things. But it's you know, when you're working on it, you want to be as perfect as possible. You wanna you don't wanna fail and all that. But I'm just telling you, like Failure would be stopping. Failure would be quitting guitar. Failure would be playing a song and just like, well, I made a mistake. And, you know, you're up on stage and you have to start again. Like that would be more in like sort of failure category. But just keep going. Own it. Own it. Most people won't even know. And if you're at a festival, most people are probably drinking. Um, <laughs> they're probably either talking to their friends or drinking and they're not really recognizing those mistakes. Okay, and even if they do, no one really cares. So either people aren't going to notice, people aren't going to care, or both. It's all good. Um, great point, Don. Um, Ken is working on the opening riff to Jesse's Girl. Got the first 12 notes three times, no mistake. Need it like nine times. Haven't got there yet. Very cool. Very cool. And post it too, Ken. Post that, even if it's not part of play from day one. Uh, I want to I wanna see that. That's cool. Awesome. And Shay, no problem. No problem. All right. It was an absolute pleasure hanging out with you tonight. Hopefully you enjoyed this Pajama Jam, Hoffer Teacher by Van Halen. Hopefully you got some strategies. Um, you know, just I'm working on those strategies over and over and over in your mind so that when you're practicing, you're doing the same thing. You're making it, turning it into a game. You're engineering this part bit by bit, bit by bit, three times without making a mistake, moving on, two times of mistakes, uh, two mistakes in a row, uh, moving back. Okay, we gotta, these are, this, is the, this is the game that we're playing. All right. Let me know if you need anything. You know where to find me, either in the group um, that you're part of or reach out on my page. Very, very uh, excited to see all of your progress. And I can't wait to see you in the next Pajama Jam. We should be on. Let me just double check. Oh, um, next week, it'll probably still be on Wednesday, but next week is Halloween. And I'm taking my daughter to uh, go trick-or-treating. Even though she's nine months old, she's we're dressing her up like a little lamb. Uh, it's going to be so funny. She's so cute. Um, so I think we're going to be back in time for her regular bedtime, which means that 9 p.m. Eastern will still happen. And there'll probably be a Halloween themed pajama jam. I don't know. I'll probably still just look exactly like this. Maybe I'll have a costume on or something. Who knows? And maybe we'll have a Halloween theme. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Right now, we'll say that it's on and uh, just watch out on my page for any notification if there's anything, any change, either another day or scheduled for the next week. All right. It was an absolute pleasure. I hope you have a great night, great afternoon, great day, depending on what time zone you're in. And we'll talk soon. Take care.